Dominic and I like a podium. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> oh. Yeah, when I'm bugging Ken and I'm saying to him, you know, uh, this, that, that, and he'll say, you know what? Don't podiumize me. <laughs> this is not flag, everyone, because I love to invite in on other other. Yes, she does. <laughs> I would just like to say that you know who you're looking at, right? The recent award recipient of the Bernie Lake Cultural Award. Yeah. 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 That was a very thrilling indeed. Still is. Thank you, Janet. Yes, thank you. It's uh, it was very exciting. What we're going to try and do here, we're going to try and get through everybody else, everybody here once more if we can. So, uh, and I wanted to ask, just before I do this one, Sylvia, if, if you want to do one next, it has to be one out of the book, and I think Eileen didn't do one. Yeah, I didn't do one. You didn't do one. So you can read one of Eileen's. Everything's all about the book here today. So you can read one of Eileen's next. But I'm going to go ahead now with something called Alive in the Paint. If you look at paint, like to me there's lots of things that seem like they're still alive in there. Sometimes I see so many things. Anyhow, I wrote this looking at a painting that I saw all kinds of things. From shadow to light, purple to white, nestled in between death and life, I pick up my brush in the candle glow to paint a feeling I know will flow with passion, love, lust, and romance, fabulous rhythm and eloquent dance, where the blessed, the frail, and the obscurely quaint are part of the brilliance, alive in the paint. Then I take a step back and step out of the picture to analyze the paint and survey the mixture. I put down my brush and cross the floor, gaze into the mirror that hangs on the door. I stare at my image in shock and surprise at the secrets hiding behind my eyes. I see evidence of old truths tossed away, where guilty pleasures held court and held sway, dipping my world into ebony ink, clouding my judgment till I couldn't think, couldn't differentiate right from wrong, a symphony from a rock and roll song. So I polished my breath until it came to rest on the satin lapel of an artist's vest. Stars twinkled, emerged as darkness undressed. I fell to my knees and humbly confessed. The world began spinning, a bright shade of white, as I moved from the darkness into the light, delighting the eye in the sky, I suppose, because it applauded in quiet repose. Now, if I listen closely, I can still hear the sound of that one hand clapping, the other one bound. Then the sound slowly fades, becomes very faint, but something still breathes alive in the paint.